When Wangari Mathai was a small child in rural Kenya, her parents and teachers often told her, study hard so you can do something for the people of Kenya. In those years, the 1940s, Kenya was a British colony with a traditional African patriarchy, hardly a place that would see any of its future in a young girl from the country. But Wangari Mathai believes she had the ability. And there came the time when she was one of 300 Kenyan students chosen by a Kennedy administration program to help Kenya prepare for its independence. She studied biology at a small college in Kansas, went on to the University of Pittsburgh where she earned her master's in science, and returned to Kenya and the University of Nairobi to earn her PhD in anatomy. At the university, she engaged in work important to her country, research on animals, parasites, and parasitic disease. However, Wangari Mathai was destined to do more for her country outside the laboratory than within it. In 1977, Kenya's forests had been cut down to 3% of what they had once been, falling to the ambitions of a young nation eager to modernize and to the needs of a swelling population that used wood for fuel and construction. The soil was eroded. The fuel supply was nearly gone. The beauty of the land was diminished. It seemed that the country's ecological future was condemned by a desperate present. Starting with a small tree nursery in her own backyard, Wangari Mathai began a grassroots tree planting program. Under the auspices of the National Council of the Women of Kenya, it has become known internationally as Kenya's Green Belt Movement. The lab workers in this experiment were the women of rural Kenya, where women had worked the land for centuries. Tree nurseries were started and seedlings distributed to other women to plant and raise. Trees for Kenya's forests, trees for greenbelt space on public land and private land, crop trees for fuel wood, fruit trees for food, shelter, and soil enrichment. By 1990, 50,000 Kenyan women were at work in 1,000 nurseries. 10 million trees had been planted and 8 million had grown to maturity. The employment and empowerment of Kenyan women had helped Kenyans themselves become the saviors and protectors of their land. But for someone like Wangari Mathai, the environmental challenge never ends. In 1989, she knew she would have to oppose a monumental government project, the tallest skyscraper on the African continent, 60 stories in the middle of Nairobi's largest public park. Wangari Mathai came all out against it. The Kenyan government was furious with her. The Green Belt movement was attacked as subversive. She had to leave her office of 10 years and 24 hours. But she said, I cannot condone that kind of activity and call myself an environmentalist. I may as well not plant another tree. In 1990, foreign investment for the project began to withdraw. The government scaled the building plans down to half. And now even that has yet to begin. It took courage for Wangari Mathai to oppose her government and risk so much for environmental principles. But this was a woman whose parents and teachers had told her to do something for Kenya, and nothing has ever stopped her. And it has taken millions of years to build this topsoil. It is so important to protect it, because if we don't, we are on our way to the end. For outstanding environmental achievement in Africa, a 1991 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Dr. Wangari Mathai of Nairobi, Kenya.